Okay, so we have lots of innovations going on over the whole post-war period. Now, if innovations are too risky and they go bad and they fail, people are probably not going to do them again, at least for a while, because you're always going to forget, right? And in fact, subprime mortgages were invented in the early 80s, if I remember right, and they failed. And so they weren't done again for two decades, and then they came back. Uh, but the problem is we had the big bank and the big government that always propped up the financial sector so that the innovations mostly don't fail. So the government comes to the rescue. So that uh, allows fragility to increase. That allows the managed money to grow because we never have crises big enough to wipe out managed money. Uh, we shifted the weight of the financial system away from what was regulated to what was not regulated, and we deregulated um, also on the regulated part. So we did have an evolution from hedge toward more speculative Ponzi positions. As Minsky described, it just didn't have anything to do with an investment finance, or it had little to do with investment finance. It had much more to do with other kinds of finance. So in the post-war period, we had a nice virtuous cycle. The stability encouraged innovation. Because you're in a very stable period. How are you going to get better returns? By innovating and trying riskier things. Competition means that as soon as you innovate, Unlike in other business areas, you cannot trademark a financial innovation. As soon as you invent the junk bond, anyone can do it. As soon as you invent a subprime mortgage, anyone can do it. And they all do. Okay. So what does that mean? You're doing something that has a higher risk and a higher return. Everyone else does it. The risk is still there, but the return collapses because of competition. So maybe in the beginning you're getting, let's say, 100 basis points because it's riskier, but the competition lowers the price of these until you're getting the same uh, premium that you get on risk-free things. They get pushed down. So the competition lowers. The only way then that you can increase your return is to increase your leverage ratio. So you go from, banks have a leverage ratio of about 12 to 1. Every dollar, they borrow 12. Uh, Non-bank financial institutions have leverage ratios of 50. Okay. $1 of your own money, $50 you borrow. Uh, I don't know the, what's the little round face kid that was in the movie, what's his name? Sorry, I don't watch cartoon. My kids all know this stuff. Remember he goes to the bank and... and uh, ah, the uh, North Park and... Uh, South Park. South Park. Okay, North South Park. Park. <laughs> South Park. <laughs> Sorry, South Park. When you, when you borrow, uh, you know, you increase your leverage ratio, you increase your potential loss of money. Anyway, then you go to hedge funds. They can be 300 to 1. $1 of your own, $300 borrowed. Okay, so you increase leverage ratios to keep the returns up. That greatly increases the credit availability because for every dollar of capital, you can have $300 of uh, financial uh, liabilities out there, which pushes up asset prices. And because asset prices are rising, everyone wants to innovate even more because they want to take advantage of the bubble. And so we get a nice virtuous cycle. Okay, and this will greatly increase all of the financial activity that's going on, uh, the uh, financialization of the economy, and greatly increase the downside if things start going bad, because we've greatly increased the leverage ratios um, in order to restore the returns on very risky 